Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Cooking in the studio, sweat dripping from my neck Hotter than a skillet, Angel trying to keep it in check Mike steaming, boards beaming, hotter than a sunbeam Dick slumped on the table, faded like a bad dream Radio, no AC, we roasting like a pig Andrew cracking jokes, trying to keep the tempo big But Dick's eyes glazed down for the count Hottest talk show around with a body count Hot airways burning through the lines On fire Forced laughter and awkward silence. It's the audience of one show on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5 FM, streaming on IRLoneStar.com and available wherever you get your podcast from. I am Andrew, next to the guy who wouldn't mind if his partner had an OnlyFans page. It's Dick. I'll fight the guy in the wheelchair. Schistler. Heck yeah. And not care about it either <laughs> when you tip him over. Well, you know, it might look bad. <laughs> It's a bad look. But guess what? It's still a win. It's oh, du- still a win. A W is a W no w matter is what, w, right? <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. If you don't know what we're referring to, just check out last week's show where we discuss fighting a guy in a wheelchair. It's what we do right here on the wow. Audience of One. We bring you the topics that everyone well, else is too, too afraid to talk about. It really is. It really is. Yep. Well, yeah, it was fun having Patty O Furniture. Is that his like real name? I or think is that is just like if I, you type in Patty O Furniture, will you find him? I think that might be a pseudonym. It is funny, though, because I did ask him, you know, what name you wanted to go with. He said Patio Furniture. So I went, okay. Yeah, that's why I had him on the graphic. Ah, yeah. So I was like, so all right, I cool. don't know his actual last name. I like to believe that it's O and, Furniture. And I'm going to start a new game with him. Yeah. Is every time he comes in, I'm like, so what's your new job? <laughs> yeah, what new business have what, you opened yeah, up? Yeah. Well, what's funny is he hasn't closed any. No, he just keeps opening more and more. Yeah. And it's kind of like. When one door opens, another one doesn't close, another one opens. Well, he reminds me of that guy or girl that would always have some like an answer for a problem. Mm-hmm. He's like, I, got, I know a guy who can do that. Mm-hmm. I know a person. I got that, a guy for that. I got a guy for that. I, yeah. I know a person that can do that. I know how to do that. But then again, he spends too much time on Facebook. He spends just the right amount just of time. Just the right amount of time. You know, that does remind me. I actually had somebody out to my house a few weeks ago to do work. And in this case, they were cleaning the uh, the rug, the throw rug, and the couch because it was getting yeah. a little stinky. And it's kind of an odd scenario when you have somebody come to your house and do work while you're there because they're working oh, and you're yeah. just oh, kind of yeah. just like watching them. You, okay, you know it's it, weird. The house I grew up in, whenever we had a worker there, my mm-hmm. dad would like go help them. Right. Well, see. And I'd be like, "What?" And he's like, "Go help him." Well, in my case, I was in my office <clears throat> working, and the office is basically right in front of where he's performing work. So I'm like looking at him the entire time, and I had this weird feeling, like he was looking at me as if I wasn't really working. You know, and like kept looking back, and what is this guy doing? He's not really working. I'm doing actual work. That's when you have those fake phone so calls. Odd. It'd be like, "John, you need to sell it when it's high, but when it's low, you gotta buy." And then it's like he just make up. <laughs> And then that actually, I would have a lot of fun with that. I'd be like, "How many bodies are there?" Okay, yeah. yeah. What's the condition? How many? How many hours? Is it See been? him turning around. What and, the heck uh, is going well, on you know, in there? You know, it's funny. Is I He's had I had a conversation me. with one of my friends who happens to be older, and he bought one of those cool tables that has you know how they put that. It's like wood, but then they cut out certain sections and they pour that. I don't know what that stuff's called, but make it look like a river. You ever seen those kind of tables? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not laminate. I don't know what it is. Like epoxy. Or it's an epo- Yeah, it's an epoxy. So, it mixes so, chemically and it makes yeah, it so look Yeah, so he, he got neat. one, right? Right. And I, I was visiting him one night, uh, and he's like, yeah, thank goodness the guys who were like doing the, like mowing the yard were here because they could help me move this. And I was like, hey. uh, and, I go, <laughs> nice. did, and I go, did you not think about when you bought a table that would weigh 300, 400 pounds? Right. That you could move that by yourself, but how resourceful of him to use the lawn crew oh, to help yeah. him move oh, furniture? Yeah. Well, no, they offered. Oh, well, yeah. He was like trying for to... a little uh, grease the palm. Well, I'm sure, maybe. But then he goes, "I wish I could uh, hire a handyman just to help me do stuff, not necessarily do things for me, but no. just help me do stuff." Patty O furniture. And so I was like, <laughs> I, I wonder if there is a handyman because most people, like you say, you you ask people to do a job for you, right? And then you can go do whatever you're else. 
But then, like, if but if you're a hands-on kind of guy, I guess it's like I actually do need a little help moving this mulch. Can you just? I'll pay you. Just help me. Well, in my case, because I was standing there essentially watching him, even though I wasn't, I felt as though he thought I was watching him perform or keeping an eye oh, on him. Yeah. It was just made for a really odd scenario, like dance, boy, dance, clean that carpet. Well, you should have. Yeah, just to make it awkward. Yeah, I like your idea though, pretending to do some sort of drug deal on the phone oh, or yeah, something. Oh yeah, like <laughs> how many kilos? Let me get my my calculator out. I need to convert. Oh, uh, too funny. But yeah, I wonder if our handyman, maybe patio furniture, can do that. It's like you can call it a handyman buddy, so people understand. It's like no, I'm here to help you, not like do a job for you. I'm here to help you, because uh, I know like da- like dads everywhere would love that. Because I even told my buddy, I was like, why didn't you just call me? The problem is some dads like to take all the credit for the work, and they don't which want is, the handyman which getting is all fine, the credit. But it's like, even if you have friends. That's like, right, I, I fixed like, that. You could have called me. He was my neighbor. And I was like, you could have just call me. I would have come over and helped you move this. We ain't paying somebody to do that. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. That's the only problem with it. And, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, I- I'm getting into the world of car washing now. Because you uh, recently purchased a new car? Yeah, and, yeah. I was, and I was like, oh, I need to start washing it. And then, uh, it's a good I, idea. Because we have a new car show here. Make sure you do the inside and get the bird crap out as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And yes, well, I did hear about your new car show. Yeah, we have a new Mondays, car show on, on the on the radio, and they were talking to me about what products they use. And I was like, can you just take it to the car wash? And he's like, no, no, no. Everyone, everyone was like, no, 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 you cannot do that. Well, blah, 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 the paint, blah, blah, blah. So I started looking into it, and it because and, I have special seats, so I needed a special type of cleaner that's like it's not real leather, but it's like Active X. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> and I got I went through a little rabbit hole, dude. And there's there's some price gouging going on. Uh huh. And it's a little ridiculous. Specialty products. Like, yeah. Like there's there's legit a hundred dollar car wash fluid. Mm. You pay a hundred dollars for this thing. I don't. But yeah, some people. Some do. people do. Yeah, and I'm like, that. What does it do? Does it do everything? Like, I saw one time headliner cleaner because you, it's such a, a, a delicate material on your headliner. You don't want to use the same type of cleaning material, and that's a little bit pricey too. Yeah, it's like, it's wild. What will they think of next? But uh, I'll report back with what I find. Nice, thank you. Keep me up to date with this. Yes, ask away. So they have like a foam cannon, right? And it sprays. For cleaning your car or cleaning for like your car. a Friday night out at the club? Well, maybe it could be multiple uses. Okay. So it has a foam cannon. And I'm thinking, like, well, that just sprays the soap. You still got to wash it. Yeah, that's true. So why wouldn't you just use... It's more fun. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I'd want to wash my car if I had a foam cannon. Yeah, that's true. Get a few ladies over. Because I was debating on getting one because I was like, that does look, look a little fun. <laughs> and, it, and then it's also another cool attachment you can put on the power washer, you know. Just, yeah. And it's... Yeah, maybe Bikini Night will be... There you go. There you go. Sponsored like by AOO. Bikini Night. Do you ever have anyone ask you how the show is going or something like that? or Maybe not even this show, but another show. This happens to me, not often, but every now and again, someone will say, Hey, man, how's that uh, podcast you're doing going? I'm like, avid listener, listener, aren't we? But it's kind of an odd question because I'm like, yeah, it's, it's going good, I guess. I know our podcast numbers keep growing every week. Thank you, everyone. But they'll say something like, so is it easier to do the show now than when you first started? And I, it's, it's kind of a, an odd thing to try and answer accurately because it's like it all depends on when I eat. It's like yeah, for you, yeah, and the temperature, eating yeah, and temperature I'm in here. Very, I'm very sensitive. You're sensitive I'm to a the sensitive. You're guy. sensitive to the uh, environment, as our intro song so delicately pointed well, out. You know, everything's hanging on Cindy coming in because I guarantee you she didn't bring me food. She said she would. Uh oh, this will be I'll, interesting. The thing, and that's why I wanted to record before she came in because yeah. we were going to record afterwards, and yep. I was like, I don't want to be in that situation where. I'm pissed off because she didn't. It give was me a calculated uh, decision to, re- to record before, by the way, just so you know. So I got a fresher, no, oh, totally a fresher I, co-host. I, uh, but but yeah. it, when they ask me if it's easier to do, I think well, it's kind of like you know watching your kids grow. When you see them every single day, they look the same. But then you go back and look at a picture of them from like a year ago, and you're like, oh, look at little Georgie. He's grown up, yeah. you know, so much since then. So I think you know when I go back and I listen to old episodes of this show, no, we hadn't gotten any better. No, no, it's a it's a bummer. You'd well, think by now it really comes down to. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is the, easier the, to get behind this mic and slay, but and, um, sl- <laughs> and just completely God. slay it. But uh, it's hard to measure that. You well, know, it also accurately. depends on what's going on in the news. It's true it's things like that. Because hey, a audience at one show at gmail dot com send us the cool articles you find or interesting things. I will. Oh, I wanted to. I forgot to tell you this. 
Yeah. So I was hanging Don't out. Forget. I was hanging out with Courtney, who's my girlfriend now. Ooh, we need to think of a and, pseudonym. Oh, who cares? Okay. Uh, and she does not have an OnlyFans page, by the way. But like, so I've gotten into that point where we started hanging out, and doing the normal things. You know, Uh-oh. this you're is past dating now. Well, it's not really. I mean, we're not making plans to go to dinner. It's like, oh, we have an afternoon together. What do you want to do? So or we're you're saying, what's for dinner tonight? Or what, what are we mm-hmm. watching? You know, mm-hmm. and then where I'm getting to is what are we watching? And I'm never one of those guys who likes to watch things with other people, unless it's a sport. Mm-hmm. And I'm I was like, gonna say something else. Well, except I, for like your buddies back in college, but that was something else. Uh, that's Go something ahead. else. Yeah. Uh, but I, I never like just got because I was like, hey, I like this show. I'm gonna watch it. Mm-hmm. Regardless if you want to watch it or not, and I'm going to put it on, you know. Well, I go to YouTube, and for some reason, the Ocho stuff we've been watching, <laughs> yes, somehow created a playlist for me. Yeah, and I did. was like, "Hey, this looks kind of wild. What's this?" So we watched Downhill Derby uh, Power Wheels. So we watched that for like 20 minutes. I thought that was very interesting. So it's Downhill Derby. Mm-hmm. And it's all Power Wheels. And when you say Power Wheels, you mean the child's three wheeled ch- toy or, with it's got or a four wheel or whatever. Oh, Power Wheels. I'm thinking big wheel. Okay, yeah. Power Wheels. Got gotcha. no, it. Can yeah. be, it's whatever. Okay. But what's interesting about it, though. We've talked about Power Wheels before. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So, what was interesting about it is no matter what, you got to finish the race. So, grown men were like going down this choppy hill, mud hill, yep. flying, losing their power wheel. So, they're running to their power wheel, grabbing it, and running to the finish line. Yeah, they. Th- th- I guess the power wheel doesn't necessarily have to be in operable condition yes. at the line. Oh, it just, they break it, it just it has break. to, cro- like, it just has to cross. Yeah. What was great, though, is some of these guys were getting in fights. Yeah, they were. Like, you they were, You could see them talking trash, and then they go down, and then they fly off this thing, and the thing, like, the wheels come off. It takes and, a, then, and then they're dragging it, like, run into it, and they touch the hay barrel, and they're like, yeah! It takes a special person to talk crap to somebody while you're in a power wheel, you know? Well, that's, that's, was, that's quite a flex play. Well, because I was wondering how I got really into it, because I was like, yeah. if you break your power wheel, that means you can't compete anymore. Yeah, you just got to run with it. And it's probably an elimination thing, so you're going to be like, you win the race, or you're going to be at the next race at 3 o'clock. Oh, I thought you could just pick it up and run with it. At that point, but I think at the very beginning it's got to be. Oh sure, it's got to be operable. Like you're yeah, in it. to start off with. So do you bring multiple, <laughs> like at a NASCAR race yeah, where they've got a couple I, of cars? Because there was like it. Was, it looked ridiculous. And, well, yeah, I bet it does. Yeah, and I was I was having a good time. I and the next video we watched was the figure eight bus race. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That's pretty uh, no, wild. I have not. So basically, what it is is the track is in a figure eight, and it's buses. Okay, full and size bus. Full oh, si- I actually, I think I have seen this. And I really, and I was thinking to myself, if I saw that in the paper or like on Facebook or something, I would totally go to that. Yeah, yeah. Because that looked, it looked, it looks like ridiculous. A lot of fun. It looks and, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there was that kind of racing going on, and I, there was a couple other odd sports. But uh, you know, I, I had this in the run sheet a little bit further down, but I think I'm going to talk about it right. now because this I fits in know, just perfect. It, 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 it really bonded. Us, because she goes, why are we watching this? I'm like, well, why? Well, not? I can tell you when my wife and I were first dating, we watched the uh, like the MXP. You know what that is? The no. the, the games that oh the voiceover stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah it was. Uh, I don't even know how you describe it, but a Japanese game show yeah. that they voice oh, dubbed over American that, voices. We actually watched. Yeah, uh, that was great. That was another, a bonding moment for us. Another one we watched was really cool. Was legit skateboarders in Japan doing uh, obstacle courses. Right. So it was race, like a downhill race, but they were doing, it was like a funky, it was almost like Nickelodeon kind of courses, but they cool. had to do it all on their skateboards. Sounds and I awesome. was like, that's actually really challenging. And like, they had like go down this little tiny bridge and they fell off into the water, but like, you know, they had to grind this nice. thing. Nice. And so I, I was like, that, that looks like that actually was legit because yeah. I know you used to skateboard. I, yeah, for and, when I was younger, for sure. But I, I don't, yeah, just look up Japanese their uh, skateboarding course. Got and it. And, Got My it. favorite one was they had to go downhill this thing, and, and they had a time this fake door was closing, so they had to get under the door without breaking the door, and nice. it looked really challenging. Because what what is it about Chinese Japanese? I don't know, sort of that Eurasian type uh, game show. They 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 put it up a notch. Right? Yeah. They they do stuff that's super crazy. I think I saw one show one time where it was just this giant slide, and all they did was pour like baby oil on it, and you had to go from the bottom up, and you know, trying oh, to. Yeah. And all, and all, you can imagine everybody's just slipping and falling, and 
it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's and that, that was the entire show. Yeah, I think that's a you don't need anything thing. else after that because I know like during the summer here they always have the game shows, right? Yeah, what do you mean they always on have TV? The game shows I always see summer? game shows oh, being probably. advertised yeah, during the summer because no one's Ninja doing... Warrior, the Ninja yeah. Games. Yeah, that's probably yeah, it is kind of a summertime thing. I think Wipeout. I think that was one which yeah. is very similar to MXP. Well, um, you can go ahead and kick off the show music if you want, but I will be going to Las Vegas over the summer in July, and it dawned on me I will be there at the same time as the Olympics. Which is, is it gonna... in Las Vegas? No, 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 no. The same time the Olympics is kicking off. It's going to be... Sorry if I... I thought it was like in France it's or in, something. It's in Paris, yeah. yeah. But my point is... I'll be in Las Vegas, so I can get I can make some action on this if I wanted oh, really? to. Like, yeah, I'm guessing that you could probably gamble on like you know, the South Korean discus player or whatever if you really wanted to get into it. I could put some action down on the Olympics. But then it also got me thinking about something. Can you gamble on the Special Olympics? Ah, probably. 100%. Would you feel a little odd about gambling yeah. on the Special Olympics? Yeah, they're, they're competitors. <laughs> Yeah. Because the Special Olympics, they legit have gold medals and silver medal. It isn't no, like, I understand It isn't that. like everyone gets a medal. But it just seems like there's something inherently wrong about placing a bet, you know, on somebody who might be a little bit challenged. No. Well, I looked it up, and indeed you can. In fact, last year, I guess they do Special Olympics in off years from the regular Olympics. In 2023, there was an outfit, I guess it was overseas, in Berlin. Yeah, Germany that was actually taking odds on the Special Olympics. Eek, man. I mean... I don't think I could do it, but it is, see, this is, it is I, an interesting thing to think it. about. You need to get over it. <laughs> but anyways, I do think I might put a little action down on the regular Olympics. What I doubt sport? Uh, you know, I don't know. What's, I, it's usually swimming is first. Right, and then they go into track to be and honest, field. I don't know. I don't watch the Olympics. The Olympics is a lot more I, popular with the ladies for whatever reason. Ladies yeah. that don't normally get into sports love the Olympics. Well, uh, I mean, I remember watching boxing. That was kind of like, yeah. oh, I'll watch the boxing yeah. stuff, and then because uh, that's always fun. Uh, but yeah, and then that was kind of it. I don't like soccer. I'll definitely watch the soccer. Yeah, but I think soccer kind of takes a back seat because you have World Cup events and things like well, that. There's that so to be many more, games. It's yeah. not, it's not yeah. like a... Well, yeah. Because I remember... Track and field, was swimming, that's about when all the last, Remember the last Olympics? And somehow they screwed up skateboarding? How do you screw that up? Have you? Did you watch it? They needed to watch the Japanese people. Did you watch it, though? Skateboarding? Uh, I don't think was, I did. It was so boring. I don't think I remember watching skateboarding, but I do remember it being in the Olympics for the very first time well, in they, Tokyo. Because they like they all shortened places. all the competition stuff, so it's like you literally have forty five seconds down a, tr- uh, a street course. Boo! And I'm like, you realize how long it takes to get momentum? Well, and to at, get the perfect angle. They're like, Olympians, but you know what I mean. <laughs> like, well, to do a do a combination of tricks, it's like it's gonna be you need two and a half minutes or five minutes, like to showcase a street. Course, my, a street course, yeah, right. But then, like, when the scoring, I was like, "How do they even know what to give him?" Like, he just ollied, like, what? Wow, yeah. And because you know when they do that, the half pipe, mm-hmm. totally get that because you, you have your two minutes and you have a routine. It's you almost, have to do a certain amount of yeah. It's almost like a figure skating. They and know exactly what they're going to be doing. Yeah. But, Tricks. But yeah, it was very underwhelming. I was like, no one's going to like this next year. Well, next you'll time. like this though because staying on this theme of summer. Uh, I'm sure you attended summer camps just like I did. Well, Chick-fil-A is announcing a new summer program in Louisiana. And I think this is pretty interesting. Uh, They are going to have a unique experience for kids called the Chick-fil-A summer camp. Well, how original. But for $35, you basically can put your kids ages 5 to 12 in a three-hour session with team leaders. And they get to go behind the scenes and check out the inner workings of a franchise location. Sounds like... You know, a normal three-hour summer camp, right? Okay. What could go wrong? The outrage. What do you think people immediately complained about with this program? Child labor. They were griping that, look, teaching kids uh, how to earn, earn corporate wages at a young age, way to go, this, that, and the other. I think they've missed the entire point of this program. I don't think they're going to have... Little Timmy back there serving up nugs. You know, they've got him in a little special area. But these people freaked out thinking, well, man, Chick-fil-A, what are they doing? Why aren't kids? Well, they're not, it doesn't even sound like they're... I know. 
interacting with anybody. It's Th- all that's them. what I'm thinking. It's like a special enclosed deal. That's what I'm assuming. But you know, people love to get outraged. I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh. Whatever. Uh, it says this is super weird. And these are these people even trained in childcare? Not having children, you you probably don't understand how difficult it actually is when the summer time shows up. To have activities planned for your kid, like, what am I going to do with these kids all day? And the problem is most of these summer camps are like two or three hours a day. You take them in at nine, you pick them up at noon. Well, that doesn't do me any good. I've got a job. I can't just drop everything and take them back and forth. So it is a challenge, but I like this idea. Yeah, kids love Chick-fil-A, and they get a lunch. Well, of course, it, of course it's from Houston. Of course, the one that started it was six years ago. From, oh, did they do one here locally? Well, it's it's been going on for over six years at this one locally in Houston, and oh, then they, they do <laughs> activities like bingos and trivia. So it's 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 a legit camp. It's not I like think so. Yeah. Well, well, people are full well, of outrage. Hey, I gotta tell you this though. So I was wondering what the newest. Oh yeah, it says that they sold out quickly here in Houston. I Sorry, wanted, I wanted to see what the newest Olympic sport was for this year. Mm-hmm. Break dancing. Oh, that's legit. See, I wonder if I can get some odds on that so, in Vegas. So they're, well, they're calling it breaking because I was like, what the hell is breaking? And then so it's break dancing, and then they're adding surfing. They're keeping skateboarding, but they said they're uh, they're going to have park and street again, and it's going to be boring. <laughs> and then sport climbing, which is actually kind of cool. So uh, Yeah, but they need to add like full contact to that so that you can pull the guy next to you down. We'll just go go full uh, American Gladiator. That's what I'm saying. It would be more like a gladiator sport. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. But breakdancing. <laughs> or you could just me, throw things at them. It, it's funny because I think breakdancing is the only Sneaker. legit newest one. Okay. Because all the like surfing, all them, they, they it's been coming and going. I think it depends on where they are. The problem I have with sports like that in any sport that is completely subjective, it's. You know, I'm sure they have to well, have technical art. moves it's, and things, but when you don't have a score. It's always up to some judge, and you know there's always some Russian judge with a bug up his butt. There's always who's like, guy. I'm not going to score that guy. Mm-hmm. Look at his head spin. <laughs> I spit at him. He's, American. He's juicing. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if that would help in breakdancing, by the way, to juice. I, I mean, some guy I think... just comes out looking like The Rock, <laughs> trying to do a pop and lock. Yeah, so... Yeah, skateboarding, they didn't change any of it. They're doing the 45-second run before five tricks. That's so boring. And then uh, sport climbing, they're basically doing, they're going to have three different walls. They have bouldering, speed climbing, and lead climbing. I don't even know what that, hmm. but uh, but that's kind of cool, though. Yeah, man, for uh, sure. Weren't Ninja Warriors just, because uh, what it was, uh, man, what, what's the competition called when they combine all that stuff? Like the javelin throw, the oh, uh, the heptapalon or something like no, that. No, there's a legit. There's three of them in the Olympics. It's a y- three. Yeah, it's, it's it's the ball, the javelin, and some meter race, right? Yeah, it's the, the it's like the heptapalon. I thought. Oh man, I don't know. Triathlon? <laughs> no, not triathlon. That's running, biking, and yeah, swimming. They don't have that. Uh, they might. I don't know, but I know what, what you're talking about. Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner won it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, and that's basically considered the winner of that is the the basically the all around yeah. yeah Olympic track and field winner. I thought that's what it was called. I don't know, man. Decathlon. Decathlon. I was close. What I say, heptathlon. Yeah. That sounds like something you need to go to the doctor and get checked out. My heptathlon's acting up. It's ten track and field events. Ten. Wow, that's awesome. I could get behind six, but ten is a little I bit like much. 10. I like all of that. I think I think everyone should be required to enter this one if they want to be in the Olympics. That would be pretty funny. Like you don't get to pick and choose your like one the event. Sumo guy, like a <laughs> sumo guy doing it. Wouldn't that be tight? We'll let you do sumo, like, but hey, you also got to do can, high jump. Can we get him on the rock climbing? How do we do? I this? think it will start to look a lot like the special. Olympics. Well, I mean, <clears throat> uh, no, they, I think that'd be hilarious. If they apologies. incorporate that in the way where like your eligibility of a of a country. Is you have like you have to like say you're a fencer. I'm the <laughs> okay. best fencer, but then it's like, hey, on every team you have to have one that's not a professional or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it's randomly selected. Nice. So like you have your pool of your professional or your top athletes, but like every every one has to do randomly another one. <laughs> so you got like it comes a fe- out this lanky five nine kid. Who's really really good at the at the uh, I don't know the decathlon or something like that? But then he put him in sumo. I mean, yeah, <laughs> he gets just yeah. absolutely tossed. Oh yeah, I think that'd be great. Oh man, 
Yeah, I guess. Well, this summer, staying on this summer, because it is definitely officially summer uh, as of last week, the 21st, I think, is the summer solstice, which marks the start of summer. Well, this summer is the 25th anniversary, I believe, of the movie The Blair Witch Trial. Do you remember or have you seen The Blair Witch Trial? It was interesting, and this movie came out, I think, was there in 1999. In What's that? Was there an actual trial in the movie? Was it called the Blair Witch Trial? Uh, yeah, Blair Witch, right? And then what it was called? Blair Witch Trial. It was a Blair Witch Project. project. Sorry, sorry, Blair Witch Project. Sorry, not the trial. I screwed that up. That's what I was like. But it I came don't out, remember that. Sorry, I don't know why I said trial. Yeah. Uh, it, it came out in 1999. I was in my early 20s. I was in that prime area where this was hitting all of my friends, man. Like, dude, bro. You hear the Blair Witch Project's coming out? It's like supposed to be real, man. It's like real footage, real footage. And the marketing campaign around it was brilliant. And basically, if you're not familiar with the Blair Witch Project, there were two guys in 1997 um, paid $500 to a group of no-name actors uh, to go out with a loose script uh, into the woods and pretend that they're filming like a, a, a camping trip that goes awry. And he paid them all $500. A couple years later, they uh, displayed at the Sundance Film Festival, and immediately uh, some larger outfit sees it, picks it up, and pays them $1 million for it. I think it was Artisan Entertainment paid them $1.1. So they're thinking, great. Well, Artisan turned around, flipped that, put it out broadly into theaters, and it made $300 million. And it was all based on the marketing of that movie because it was – you weren't really quite sure whether or not this was real. That was the big deal. Is this actually happened? And these people have never been heard from again, these campers. And they were required, I think, to use their real names, and they had to stay quiet signing these non-disclosure agreements during the filming that they couldn't be out and about. I mean, it was they did a really good job of pretending that these people had disappeared out in the woods and they just happened to find their footage from their camping trip. And I, being the skeptic at the time, didn't quite buy it. I have to admit I was a little suspect. Go figure. But I watched the movie, and I remember it being pretty pretty scary. But it did not seem to me as though it was particularly real. How about you, man? Oh, I didn't think it was real at all. Yeah, but you remember that was the attempt. That was the marketing. Well, I remember right? that was the style mm-hmm. of like the found footage. Yeah, the camera was shaking yeah. from like a handheld camcorder. I, mean, I get it. It was cool. It was different. It was absolutely. It was very. It was uh, one of its kind. I don't know if there's ever really been anything quite like it since. Although they did try to make a Blair Witch Project too, which doesn't make sense. Like in 2017 or 18, I don't think it did. Well, very well. What, what confused me, I remember when the movie came out and they would do like the missing person kind of stuff, and I'm like, that kind of ruined the movie. <laughs> yeah, I guess it could. Yeah, like I was kind of like, oh, they're missing. This is found footage. Like that's boring. Like, oh, you could tell me aliens took them, or a monster ate them, or a witch got them, but like, they're they're still gone. So who cares? Like, okay. yeah, yeah. So you were it was not one of your favorites, I suppose. Well, I just don't. I was like, maybe if it was not saying at the very beginning, yeah, these people are missing. It's like, what kind of well, we're watching them right now? Like, <laughs> well, this was filmed again, and they found the footage out in the know. woods, man. Know, Come on, I'm just a little disappointed. Well, 25 years ago, it doesn't seem like that long ago, but the Blair Witch Project, man, how time flies. Speaking of summer, we've got one teacher, and I'm skipping around on the run sheet for just a second because I did want to cover this. A second grade teacher who's now out on her summer break, uh, who was arrested in California for being drunk in class, is no longer facing charges. Would you like to know why? Because someone slipped or something. Nope, that'd be that'd be an interesting story. No, apparently being drunk is not illegal. To teach while drunk. Sorry, not being drunk. It is not illegal to teach drunk. (laughs) Yeah, man, this lady's name is Wendy Munson's. Her blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit when she was nabbed midway through teaching students in the Nuestro Elementary School in North Sacramento last October. So she's up there slurring around, probably talking crap about her husband talking crap about her husband. And someone's going Mrs. Munson doesn't seem right today. I don't know. Probably one of the kids had a cell phone. I mean, how else would they have alerted authorities? Can you come and check on Miss Munson? 
she's not doing so well. But apparently it's okay. So I think, Dick, basically what I'm saying is I have found the perfect job for you. Who knew? You can get loaded up and go teach the elementary school kids because it is perfectly legal to do That's so. That's wild. Yeah, man. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? It says it's, it might be inappropriate. Unfortunately, not illegal, the officer said in announcing the decision. Well, yeah. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah. Teach away, teach away. I am getting advertisements, and I want you to show the onesies this picture. Uh, it's coming up in my Facebook feed quite often. And when I first saw it, I had to laugh because I wasn't entirely sure what it was. But this is something called a, it's from the company Omnimax. Okay. And it's basically a skin aging or skin rejuvenation, anti-aging LED mask <laughs> that you can wear. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's kind of like where Lucha Libre meets BDSM. I don't know. But essentially, it's this mask you put on over your face. And the lights, I guess, in the mask are supposed to help with the, the, the skin irritation and oh, things yeah. you have. But can you imagine waking up to your spouse with them wearing that? And the, Look mean, at that picture. And she's, this, she's like inviting me. Right? Hey, she's like, I'm hey. about to put this mask on. Hey, I'm down. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I and mean, then what if you like... <laughs> I'm like, can you change your voice though? You gotta change your voice. Yeah, what if you start requesting your wife to, hey, can you put on the LED mask yeah, tonight? Yeah, plug it in. <laughs> Where's the extension cord? I want to play Silence of the Lambs again tonight. Yeah. No, uh, whatever. This is so weird, though. I mean... Would you wear that thing? That thing looks terrifying. Or allow your partner to? I mean, if you want to. Whatever. Dude, that, that thing freaks me out. I don't know. Freaks me out. Dick, I know that you have mentioned the troubles you've had with um, wearing a headphones all day and what it's done to the top of your head. Yeah. Well, good news. Two pays are making... A comeback with Gen Z and Gen Millennials. I don't see why not. This but. is not your grandpa's toupee. Apparently, high dollar fancy toupees are on the comeback. <laughs> well, I mean, the way I look at toupees, they've embraced it. The way I look at toupees is the only only reason you know if it's a toupee or not because it looks bad. Yeah, yeah. So if you get a good one, well, I, they, like what's the what's the difference? Well, they talk about having one quote installed. <laughs> so I think grandpa's toupee was probably just. Neatly sitting atop his head, these, I think, go, really uh, go to the next level of getting them to blend into your hair, attaching to your scalp. You can probably go water skiing, jet skiing with it, you know, playing some volleyball at the beach, whatever. <laughs> but it says, back in the day, you'd hear the word toupee, and it was a no-no, says celebrity stylist Mark Bustos, who's cut the hair of stylish famous men, yeah, including boy. Jeff Gordon and Philip Lim. Boy, that's a heck of a name he's got there, a uh, list of, of candidates or clients, I mean. So this dude, we're watching this TikTok. Let me watch this TikTok. It says, given that 80% of men experience some form of hair loss and that the market analysis for the U.S. hair transplant industry is around $6 billion, it's no surprise that hair systems are booming. Again, love the fact that they just changed the word from toupee to hair system. No, no, I don't wear a toupee. It's a hair system. I mean, she's doing. Look at this. Yeah, man. So I said it's it's quite a uh, it's quite a process. <laughs> so, anyways, there is. Let's, I'm gonna keep watching. There that. is a solution to your issue, Dick. It says uh, the the progression has only been hastened by the deluge of happy hair system recipients who started to flood the social look media feeds. That. Yeah, it is pretty impressive. Like you would not look at that and say. That dude's wearing too bay. And he looks to be, what, mid-30s, I'm guessing? Maybe even early 30s. That's wild. It is really, well, really it's also, wild, Well, it's also how you style your hair. Yes. Yeah, and they make them stylish. So. It doesn't look like the guy from the uh, Christmas Vacation, the grandpa from the Christmas Vacation. Uh, like Curly Moe and... What was it, Curly Moe and... Oh, no, that's the Three Stooges. Stooges. Like, Moe's hair always looked like a toupee to me. Yeah. Yo, I, th I think it... Wasn't it? Or it was just floppy. I, think I don't was. know. Yeah, it probably was. All right, man, it's a pretty good time to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk yeah. about the controversial new shopping carts at Walmart. You are listening to Audience of One with Andrew and Dick right here on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5, also available worldwide on YouTube, 
Facebook, and Apple Podcasts. All right, we're back with Audience One here on Lone Star Community Radio, IRLoneStar.com, slash all every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Make sure to look us up on your podcasts, also on Facebook, YouTube, all that kind of good stuff. Pound that like button, bro. We are having a good time You know what? I so noticed far. something today. I think this is the first time in the 71, 72 episodes that you and I have done together. We are both wearing a collared shirt at the same time. And we did matter. not plan that out. What's the special event? We look like we're so professional and we care about this job. We do. Yes, we do. <laughs> you know, I wanted to bring this up earlier uh, after the Blair Witch Project mention in the 1990s, but... The 1990s was kind of a crazy wheels off decade. And I know there's a lot of, and maybe there's some recency bias going on, and I'll, I'll recognize that. But there, and there certainly were a lot of politically important events that happened in the 40s, right? You had the World War II and JFK assassination in the 60s, the civil rights movement before that. I get all that. But in terms of just major pop culture events, man, the 1990s is hard to top. I got to thinking about well, certain, I, certain events. I don't know about that, though, because like, the way I look at it is before the iPhone came out, mm -hmm. it was really hard for events to solidify as important unless it was like a regional thing. See, I disagree. But, but I, well, I meant like long term. Like If you ask anybody what happened in the 90s, they'll blend it in with the 2000s. Well, yeah, because the line's it, a little blurred it's, there, I suppose. It's weird because like when the iPhone came out or when that kind of access to information that's when everyone kind of remembers everything. See, to me, the iPhone and social media has made relatively small events seem more important than they probably really are. Well, like when people talk about Nirvana. Okay. And grunge. Yeah. Like that's the 90s. Yes. And before the 90s. Yeah, they started in the late 80s. Yeah. Correct. But then like most people probably think like late 90s to early 2000s. Well, <clears throat> what I'm referring to are things like um, the O.J. Simpson thing. I mean, that was okay. squarely in the 90s. You had Lorena Bobbitt. Do you remember the Lorena Bobbitt thing? She cuts off her husband's member, right? Yeah, yeah. When they're sleeping. And, threw it, and, threw and not, it. yeah, and not only that, she throws it yeah, out the that. window while driving on the highway. And then what does he do? Has it surgically put back on only to make adult films. That's pretty wild, man. That's pretty wild. You had the Heaven's Gate cult thing, which we talked about before. You know, people really literally thought they were gonna get on a comet yeah. and go to heaven. Well, what was it? There was uh the OJ thing came out, right? Yeah. Recently on ESPN. It was like a new 30 for 30. Oh, probably right after his death, I'm guessing. Yeah, and they were comparing it about the, the sporting events that were happening around the world, and Jack Nicklaus won, like, the U.S. Open. Uh, 1986, he won his last major, and that was the— uh, Wait, who, who won it in 1997? Uh, Tiger Woods won the Masters. The U.S. Open? The U.S. Open, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, was it like Tom Kite? Or somebody like that? I don't know. You're testing my golf knowledge here on the top of top of my head. I'm looking it up. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you also had Kevorkian. I mean, this dude literally killed Arnold people Palmer. and thought it could That's be. That's what it was. Literally thought it could be illegal. No, Arnold Palmer did not win in 1997. That was his, his final. La that yeah. was his final. That's right. And I was like, "That's how long ago it was when Arnold Palmer was still playing professional golf." Wait, some hold on. Something happened. No, because the O.J. Simpson trial was 94, 95. Arnold Palmer was 97, but I know what you're talking about. Something happened at the exact same time that trumped his, I don't remember what it is now. I, I, I know what you're talking about, though, and I can't remember it. But yeah, a lot of things were going on. A lot of like things world, were going the world on. The Cup was going on. Well, I mean, that goes on all the time, bro. Every four years. You had, you had the President of the United States literally on trial for having grexual relations with another woman yeah. while in office. It's crazy, man. I just don't think that there's been a decade that can have that many singular events in a 10-year time period. Uh, speaking of the Olympics, you had Nancy Kerrigan getting attacked right there by one of her competitors, capping her in the knee. It's nuts, man. Absolutely nuts. They're all Palmer, it's, yeah. it's driving me nuts now what that event was. That Oh, my gosh. What? what? Something happened. You're going to have to look that up. Uh, Something happened to Arnold Palmer? No, 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 no. Some, some other pop culture event happened occurred while he was playing his last 
event, and it completely it overshadowed. Was OJ. Was it though? Yeah, o, like so. There, that's what that thing was about. It was the 30th anniversary of June 17th. On June 17th, they had the uh, OJ Simpson deal. Arnold Palmer's last round. Well, the World Cup. The World Cup kicked off. Okay, and ma- the, on maybe the soil for the first maybe time. Maybe 94 then. Yeah, it was 94. Oh, I thought you said 97. No, 94. Oh, okay, then June yes. 17th. Gotcha. Oh, there's the 17th. And then okay. and then it was uh, the Rangers had their celebration in downtown New York for winning the Stanley Cup. That, and then the Rockets played the okay. Knicks. You're right. So I think they did like split screens with O.J. Simpson and Arnold Palmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. And okay. then, then they're like, you're there right. was, there was I sh- thought you said 97. My yeah. apologies. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, well. Arnold Palmer sucked. <laughs> Speaking of, well, he's old, man. He probably was probably doing good just to break 80 at that well, I point. Like, well, I was watching that. Well, I love about watching that documentary. Though, I would say that most athletes in their last professional event probably don't do well. Well, there's two things I, I remember watching that documentary that was great was Bob Costa. I hate that guy. I don't know. Costas. I, Costas. I don't know what it is about him. I just have this inherent hate for this dude. Okay. I don't know what it is. Maybe we'll it's, shout out Bob Costas, have well, him I as think, a guest. Well, really, realistically, what it is is he's he comments on every single sport known to man, and I, he never seems fully co- like he knows what he's talking about. Surface level information, you yeah. Mean? Like he's just really good about someone telling him what to say. He's made a career out of it. I know, oh, no, but he's like on every sport, especially was. during the Wim- Olympics. Yeah, it was. Do you remember when he had to broadcast with pink eye? At the Olympics, was it? During yeah, the it was pink crazy. Eye? It was the, one day. of the biggest events of the year, and here he comes out with pink eye. It was awesome. But uh, and another one was Arnold Palmer's face when he, every time he shanked it, because he go like he's an old dude. So when like, he like he would trip and go his face, they would like, zoom in on his face, and his face would be like this. Uh-uh. And then you look over and you'd see the the white Bronco going yeah. down <laughs> Orange County Highway, going twenty five miles. <laughs> yeah, you know what's so crazy to me about that event. Was they were showing people's reaction on the street that OJ lived, because apparently people were gathering when he was on the road. Absolutely, people were gathering on the street and they were like crying, mm-hmm. and like, "Don't we don't want to lose OJ?" Right, he was a huge cultural. It, I know. Figure. And I was thinking, like, what did he do to deserve that kind of feeling? I can understand, like, you're the best, dude. You're good. I think it was but really like, those movies that propelled it. The but like, uh, we can't lose the Naked OJ. Gun movies. I think if we propelled. lose him, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. It, and and what's funny is that all happened prior to social media, so this was more of a natural, organic oh, thing yeah. where people were either talking or it was on yeah. radio well, they ended or whatever. Up, they ended up at his house. There's so yeah. many people. His Brentwood, California estate. Yeah, but uh, what other things happened in the '90s? Because that's about it. That's the only thing that was really good. I mean, and I the just Rockets named won back to back. A bunch, man. Like what? I'm not going to go through the list again. Like, what's the number one book from that decade? I don't. I don't. No read, one cares. Don't what's books? the number one movie? I'm sure it was something. Jurassic Park. Okay, yeah, I knew that. That was a pretty big one. That was the biggest one. Yeah, of course. And Sphere, that was big. That wasn't as big as Jurassic Park. <laughs> no. Twister. I mean, maybe The Come Phantom on, Menace Twister. was the biggest one. Oh, that, yeah, that's like 98. Yeah, yeah. it's like 99. Late ni- yeah, late 90s. Well, again, I just think it was interesting because it's got a lot of wheels off things, man. Anyways, you know, I, I, I meant to bring this up a few weeks ago when Trump was on trial. Uh, you know, there were no cameras allowed in the courtroom. And so what you got were those courtroom sketches. Yeah. And it dawned on me at that point, I can't remember the last time I saw a courtroom sketch. It seems like cameras are allowed just about everywhere now, but not in that case. And courtroom sketches, I can't believe they're actually still a thing. If you think about it, where we are in technology, we have we have drones delivering your you, Amazon package. Did I, I, right? to, I told you that I might but, interview one of the guys who was a sketch artist uh-huh. for the O.J. Simpson trial. No! Yeah. Your interview for what? So he oh you is, mean interviewed yeah, on, he's here a, at the station yeah he's an artist that uh, he's done a couple storyboards for movies and he's did, you ever heard of a movie called Equilibrium no but I lose mine it's often. a it's a great it's a great uh, great movie with Christian Bale in it and he is gonna be the sketch artist did storyboards for that movie and then a couple like kids movies and you know what storyboard artists are yeah yeah yeah, yeah they draw out basically the high level form of the movie yeah yep. and uh so i was really interested in that and then when i was talking to the guy who's putting on it's called terror fest coming in october over at S- southern star brewery he's like hey did you know he was the like the like the only oj simpson sketch artist he's the one that drew the glove and whoa and his like, pictures are probably seen yeah. everywhere yeah i was like really that's kind of cool like how do you but win they, that but wait gig? they had they allowed cameras in that courtroom because my gosh we watched it live on tv but i think it was they had it for like publications mm. Like you couldn't take pictures. You have cameras. Well, maybe. But maybe I don't know. 
But it, it does seem like all of those sketch artists have the same type of drawing. Yeah. And it made me wonder if they go to class for that or, or if they're all just like retired um, um, cartoon drawings from like carnivals and stuff yeah. like that. Because <laughs> they all... Caricatures. Character, yeah. Are they, are they retired caricature artists? Yeah. I don't know. But that just the idea, the concept that we draw some... And the thing is, they'll do a new drawing every single day. I'm like, it doesn't change. What are you doing? I mean, it's a great gig if you can get it, though, man. Well, I wonder how the the ratio of being paid for that is, because I feel like you're in that room for a long time. You are, but you're only producing so many drawings because they only need one or two. Yeah, realistically, right? And like so, I said, every day, look, Trump in the same suit, blue coat. Every but day. you wait for that moment where he's just like, I didn't do anything. But the thing is, or, since there's no cameras in there, couldn't you just make, make up? up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, he flicked me yeah, off. Yeah, double birding. They're like, and this is the moment, Trump, double bird. Yeah, prove me wrong. You don't know you didn't do it. I'm yeah. drawing it. My word is gospel. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what's so funny to me about going on? We're talking about the lack of technology in the courtroom. Uh-huh. And now we're like, now we're seeing too much of other things. So you're seeing all these clips from presidential people. And oh, like, I thought you were talking about women that shouldn't be wearing well, certain like, things. You see them all. I wanted to pull up this picture. I'm, I'll see if I can find it. I know that Do happens you, to me I often. I think it was a guy from New York. I don't it was see like that. It was like Chuck Schumer or something like that. Okay. One of these guys. But he posted a picture on Father's Day of him. He's like made a statement about like, oh, my kids finally were able to afford a house with a backyard. So we're celebrating by eating burgers and hot dogs. Well, on the grill are... Like, it's not even on, and there's raw meat and cheese on top of oh, it. Oh, completely, obviously staged. Uh, com- like, or it's AI. <laughs> or, like, I'm sitting there going, like... And AI didn't know to turn the, the heat on. And he deleted the tweet and because people were like, hey, you shouldn't put cheese on raw meat. And, I, you know, I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, there's definitely generational differences about how to cook. And I think that's one standard, though, that everybody knows. Well, I know, but I was thinking to myself, I was like, it's so funny that this guy wanted to take a picture, and he wasn't probably even cooking. Mm-mm. And I wonder if they even really even cooked that food. No, I, I doubt it. It, it was probably set up just for that photo op, man. I, and, I, and that's so funny to me. That's how fake With so fake. many of those politicians Well, no, are. not politicians. I just been in general. Like, how does people... It's kind of like that one woman. Uh, I forget her name. She's a famous actress. Well, anyway, she got, got sponsored by, like, Huey or Huawei from China, the the cell phone makers. If you say so. And she got sponsored, and so she would say, like, I love using my Huawei phone. And all of a sudden, some guy's like, you know on twi- Twitter it says if you post it from an iPhone or an Android, or it's like all your tweets promoting this are on an iPhone. Psst. Like, how do you not, <laughs> not see this? And, how do you uh, not put two and two together? Yeah, and I'm sitting there going, like, this, this is really funny to me. I wish we had that kind of tech going on with the Trump trial or something. Mm. Just be like, we just need to... I don't understand why they couldn't allow cameras in there. I don't know, man. And they allowed it with OJ. I don't know. Because that... I mean, that has to put some type of mental challenge on yourself when... You would think. You're being filmed because they're accused of murdering your wife. You would think. Anyways, the teased story about Walmart making changes to its uh, grocery carts. This is pretty interesting. I don't know. This story is from the Mirror US, but it's calling them shopping trolleys. Never heard of a a cart called a shopping trolley. But they're making changes across their 4,600 stores. But some of them who have already tried them are not sure. Is there not a picture? Uh, No, it does not have a picture. Which lame. Yeah. The changes are, you know, some of them they're putting in a place to hold your phone. That's cool. A cup holder. That's cool. They're going to be, the problem is, they're going to be three and a half inches higher at 43.3 inches, which some shorter people have said have caused problems. And the main problem is the child seat. It's a full eight inches taller on these carts. And so basically, if you got a kid in there, you look like Ace Ventura leaning out the car, trying to look around as your kid is basically right there oh, blocking. Yeah. So yeah, us short people, and I feel like I can represent all of short people, uh, I, I'm going to stand in the protest line of these new shopping trolleys, as they're called. But that does suck that they're 40. So if you're five feet, that's what, 60 inches, and these things stand at 43. I mean, that's basically at... Your chin almost, yeah. or just maybe shoulders. I if you're trying to lift a child funny. in there, I do think it's interesting though the evolution of the shopping cart. Yeah. Do you remember at one time they didn't have the little small smaller carts? It was just either the big full cart, 
or, the or you had the hand basket. Yeah. There was no in between. And so you either overloaded that hand basket or you walked around with this giant cart with five items in it. And then somebody got really smart and said, why don't we make a smaller cart? Brilliant. I use those probably half the time now, the little sh- smaller carts. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. And then somebody got really smart and put the smaller basket in front so you could put like, uh, I don't know, your bread, your delicates. Brilliant. Brilliant. But they didn't mess with the height, Dick. They didn't I like mess it. with the height. So you're gonna you gonna protest with me? No, I don't go to Walmart. I refuse to go to that place because I get scared. Every, <laughs> every time I go to Walmart, you feel like I, you're gonna I, end up on someone's TikTok reel. No, right? I feel like I have an encounter every time I go to Walmart. Every single time. And it, well, that the problem's on you then, because I yeah. go all the time and do not have encounters. Oh, no, when you I, say encounters, what kind do you mean? Of like just, the, the fifth kind or of the uh, sexual ask, kind? Like talking to me, and I'm like, I have no idea, man. I don't work at Walmart. Are you wearing blue? And. I've had that happen. I wore a red shirt into Target one time, and twice in the same trip, someone asked me where the brassiers were, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Why are these? Oh, I'm wearing a red shirt. They think I'm a partner. Yeah, I don't, I don't do Walmart. A North Dakota woman pulled over by deputies in Minnesota could face up to 30 years in prison after bong water containing, uh, or after a bong containing water that tested positive for methamphetamine was found in her car. Bro. 30 years for some bong water. <laughs> but I guess methamphetamine, that's, I mean, to me. Hold on, say that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A North Dakota woman pulled over by deputies could face up to 30 years in prison after a bong containing water that tested positive for methamphetamine was found in her car. So maybe that's how she smokes meth. So I, that's the thing. I, do you use a bong for meth? Yeah. Oh. I guess I should have just come to the oh, I learned, foremost I, I authority. I know everything now. I know everything about drugs. Thank now. you, Internet. <laughs> I know everything about drugs. Oh, uh, everything. <laughs> Anyways, because I thought, you know, bong, I'm like, well, that's just, first of all, who's testing bong water? You look at it, you go, oh, it's just nasty old no, water. I mean, but the I guess poli- the police test everything, man. I guess that's so. That's kind of their MO when they want to get you in trouble. Well, it says last year drug paraphernalia was decriminalized in that state, Minnesota, but um, even if it does contain drug residue, um, this person could still face first-degree possession crimes and could be sentenced up to 30 years. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense if drug paraphernalia was decriminalized, why this is considered anything different. Again, because I guess police can do whatever they want until it goes to court. Paraphernalia implies like it's just a tool, but this actually contains some. So if you drank it, could you have gotten high? I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Tell me. You you know everything about drugs. Well, okay. One thing you have to understand when you read these reports, they're not giving you the full truth of the bong water. It might not even have been a bong. It might have been a pipe that holds water that you light up and bubble, and that's how you smoke crack or whatever. Because when people say bong, they think of you know stoner movies. That's all I've thought yeah, of. But yeah, but like they make... And again, you're talking about people who probably have no idea what drugs are, and they're writing the report, and people are like, yeah, it's a bong. Like, well, that's really a pipe. Well, a bong is a pipe. Hmm. So it's, it's you know what I'm talking about? Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, then I was going to read this story to you as a warning, but it sounds like you already know. You make sure to clear out that bong water and make sure that it's clear well, maybe of don't all drive with that in your amphetamines. Car. Yeah, no kidding. Apparently, <laughs> she says something about... Uh, she had won money at the casino, too, and she's asking for her car to be returned with the cash in it because that is not subject to forfeiture. She was getting it turned up at the casino, I guess. <laughs> yeah, man, I think she does have a gripe here. Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, if it was decriminalized, drug paraphernalia, and I would consider this drug paraphernalia, this is residue. I, I, like, in other words, if it was just a pie, I, I just think it's fine. Because what what's funny to you is you're talking about a bong. That's pretty... In- Impressive to be driving a car and didn't spill it. And didn't spill it anywhere. Yeah. Well, so I mean, like it's kind of true. I don't get it. Maybe that could be in the commercial for like safe driving for all state. Show, shows the lady driving and she's driving so carefully as to not spill her her methamphetamine bong, bong, bong water. water. <laughs> I mean, that's another billionaire is planning to build a new Titanic called Titanic Two. Tell you, man, you and I need to get on these names. Yeah, yeah, man. They, they. they, Anyways, it is a replica of the ill-fated ship that sank in 1912 with more than 2,200 people on board. So this billionaire from Australia, Clive Palmer, like I said, wants to recreate this. Man, 
what are we doing? Last week we covered, or a couple weeks ago we covered the story of the people trying to yet again go down and visit the wreckage of the Titanic. I think, Clive, if you do this correctly, you can sell tickets to this and also beat that other guy down there to uh, see the wreckage if you do it right, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Part of the package is a trip to the bottom of the ocean. Twofer. Twofer, buddy. I don't know. I think it's creepy. They have pictures of the Titanic. And while it is absolutely beautiful, I cannot look at that staircase. I cannot look at that cafeteria and not just immediately go, we're going down. I mean, it's beautiful, well, it's but I'm weird. not doing it, man. It's I'm not doing well, it. Well, that's weird. And the Titanic, by today's standards, is say actually there's fairly like a small. Legit family Guy cartoon joke about this. Rebuilding the Titanic. Well, it's like they go on a, a they go on a you know to a place for an amusement park, and they have like a Titanic amusement park, <laughs> and it's like reliving the moment. Well, I kind of have that experience. I did go to a Titanic museum, and part of uh, the experience is they have a, a little ship that starts to, or a floor. It's supposed to mimic the, the bow of the ship, and it starts to incline more and more and more and more and more, and you can see. How it was a vi- how badly yeah. everything was shifting and sliding. Of course, it only stops at a certain degree, and then it says the ship continues to blah blah blah, and go under. So I mean, that's kind well, of I just a think, I mean, it's, that's really creepy to me. To, like to I, recreate that's what it. I'm saying. I can understand building a big boat and just saying like we're doing the same thing. We're building a big boat, but to make it look like the Titanic. Exactly. And exactly like it. We are pleased to announce that after unforeseen global delays, i.e. COVID, we have re-engaged with partners to bring the dream, who's dreaming about this, of Titanic 2 to life. Quote, let the journey begin. Mm-mm, not for me, man. Not for me. I agree. This guy's already a billionaire. I don't know why he's having to seek out all these um, additional funding, but mm, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm now getting advertisements for that face mask. No, me too. <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, my God. It was on my social. Now it's on my computer here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. How are we doing on time, buddy? I don't even know if I wrote it down. Oh, yeah, I did. I think we are good for a few more stories. A judge orders a tire company to stop blasting music at a homeless encampment. This is pretty funny. Uh, A San Rafael tire store. I don't know where San Rafael is, but it sounds like it's probably in California, if I had to guess. I don't know, has been ordered by a judge to cease playing loud music directed at an adjacent homeless encampment after a lawsuit was filed by one of the residents. Yeah, I remember this. This is is kind of funny. I remember this. And it's got to set some kind of precedent that a dude living on the streets in a tent has rights to that area. You know, it's to the point where he's like, no, you can't be playing music. And I guess the attempt here was to move them out of, you know. And if you're a business owner, you don't want them there. So I get the idea of him wanting to remove, but I love the tactic of, of playing uh, music. I'm not sure why he went with classical. Is he trying to say that the, the homeless people are not uh, tasteful enough to enjoy classical, so I'll annoy them Probably with it? Probably because it's royalty-free. Oh, that'd be, it'd be funny if it was just like AI, crappy-generated music. No, it's probably royalty-free because you got to <laughs> pay. Over, over if you're playing a speaker that loud in, in your business, you have to pay ASCAP or something. Oh, you think? Oh, yeah, I, I guarantee that's probably oh, why. You would know that. You would know that. I know everything. I know drugs. So you, but I, know. I think just about I, mean. <laughs> I think just about every song though these days is is copyrighted. Even classical, wouldn't you think? No, that certain classical music is not. Oh, because it's so old. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because it was. Yeah, there is a statute of imitations. Yes, I know. I said imitations. It's a joke. But yeah, I like it. I think it's <laughs> Gaylord, funny. who was confined to a wheelchair, said the music blared continuously for three consecutive nights, reaching decibel levels of fifty-one and one eighteen. I have no idea what that is, according to homeless advocate. Loud. Yeah, it says the noise far exceeds San Rafael's nighttime limit of fifty-five decibels for commercial zones. I I have noticed the large speakers on top of Conroe Tower, and uh, during the holidays, it'd be playing music. How come we cannot have our show blaring out there on downtown streets of Conroe? Now, guys, don't drive around with bong water. <laughs> I mean, this would be great. Empty the bong I'm water. I'm literally looking at a city council meeting going on in the chambers right next to me, and we're broadcasting this nonsense. Wouldn't it just be so great to have it blaring from I the top of the building? I wouldn't travel with any of that in my car <laughs> because... They don't care. They don't play around in Montgomery County. No, they don't. But I'm just saying I think the show needs to be broadcasted. All, f- all of the decibels. All of the decibels. May, uh, you are a, now a man on the dating scene. This is news for you. A long-awaited birth control option for men may be closer to reality. After decades of false starts, <laughs> research, researchers say they are finally making progress on a long-acting and reversible birth control option for men. 
You want to take a guess what this is? It is gel. It is a gel, a hormonal gel that men rub. Where do you think they rub it at? Ooh, nipples. <laughs> nipples. That'd be great. This would, should have played this game with Patty. Nipples, no. Uh, I'll take 100 uh, nipples for 100, uh, Pat. No, they rub it on their shoulders, which... Yeah, I think a lot of uh, hormonal things go on your shoulders. I kind of think there's better places to rub it on, but shoulders, I guess, is where the FDA has approved it. But over time, it blocks the production of sperm in the testes. Now, okay, I don't know anything about anything he knows besides well, drugs. drugs right uh what getting snipped isn't that reversible or is it not 100 percent? right i mean it i'm just curious it is really reversible know. now when they first started doing them uh they were not there have been procedures to reverse them but it's not guaranteed right right i think it's guaranteed it's not guaranteed correct so we haven't got see i don't see why they don't just go that route well, I think this is because this is exactly that. You can do it for temporary and then stop the usage. Yeah, but see, when you do this kind of stuff, you don't know what the rest of your body is going to handle. Bingo. So this is why. If you're able just to snip me for a low, low price, <laughs> and I'm totally like out the door, like, go, like oh, uh-huh. I got a week or two weeks of hurting. Taking it easy. And uh-huh. then I'm like, I'm Sitting good until pillow. I'm ready to have children. Right. I, I don't think any doctor would recommend that course of action. So they need though. to go that route, though. I mean, think about the technology we have today. We need to. That's what. That's how we. The, you get the male people on board mm-hmm. because the the cool thing about that is, in a guy's mind, it's like never having kids, right? Like because I got snipped. Mm-hmm. So if you try to claim you're pregnant, you got your pocket up wrong tree. You, you seem like you know a lot about this. Well, I thought. Now I never <laughs> understood that though. Because I know, like, a lot of my friends got snipped, and I was sitting there going, like, why did you decide to do that? And he's like, I just, because I'm like, you're already married. I don't like kids, man. Well, no, I was wondering. Well, yeah, if they're already married and they have kids, they don't want any additional. I can see yeah. that. That's very, that's, in fact. Or he that's, wants to cheat on them. Like, well, I mean. Because you. I suppose, but. Well, I, <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, because like, it's kind of the implication of it is now the guy's in control, and it's like. There's no problem here. Well, the, the reason I would not take this is because the, the whole point is it reduces testosterone in your testicles. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so to me, testosterone is kind of an important part. Plus, uh, I'm also a one-and-done for... kind of guy. What? Like, I'm going to forget to rub my shoulders. Yeah, exactly. And then are you going to trust a dude? Did you rub your shoulders this weekend? I'm like, oh, what are you saying? No, uh, but no, I don't really understand that. From it a says... guy's perspective, why don't they just perfect that surgery and then be like, well, this is an easy, low-cost option for people who probably don't want to do that. It says it uses two hormones, nestrogen, a progestin, and testosterone. You know, if you agree with which me, is the male onesies, sex hormone. let us know, audience1show at gmail.com. Well, I'm saying I wouldn't use this, but I wouldn't use the SNP as a method. A birth control? A birth control that I'm going to one day attempt to reverse. As birth control for in perpetuity, sure. But not. I'm not going to go get SNP going, ah, in a couple years I'll just reverse Yeah, why it. not? Because it may not work, man. Well, I'm saying like they, I'm saying they need to perfect it. Mm, okay. And be like, if someone came up to you and go, hey, you can get snipped. Dick and then, demands perfection. And then, and then you get 50% off a re-snip. And then on the re-snip, it gives you a 75% chance of having a kid. I'd be like, I kind of like that, those odds, because I fly loose. I love this. <laughs> you fly loose. <laughs> I fly loose, man. Or your, or your fly is loose. I love this statement, though. This is funny. Researchers have begun formulating and refining the dose and concentration of the gel since 2005. In this latest test, however, which included more than 300 couples, quote, they think they got it right. <laughs> think. Oh, my god. Think. This is not something that you want to screw around with, man. This is why we were talking about uh, testing on monkeys. We need to well, rub, you, we rub need this to on get, the monkey shoulders. We need to get a, a pee-pee doctor in here. Because I want to know, because I know like birth control for women is not 100%. No, I don't think it's anything pretty is high. 100% except but for abstinence. Is snipping Nicholas, 100%? No, I don't think it, it's very, very close. But no, I actually know someone who was snipped and had a child. Well, I mean, are we sure it says? Yeah, it is. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Sure. Normal sperm counts range from about 15 million to you 200 sure? million sperm call per millimeter of semen. And did, studies have shown that sperm counts of less than 1 test? million are low enough to ha- prevent... Was it you? No, no, it was oh, not man. me. It was no, not come me. on. How, okay, you, if I got snipped and I had a kid, I'd All be right. like... There, was, there is one telltale sign that this is indeed his daughter. She looks just like him. Well, no, 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 I don't care about that. You just asked me, how did I know? No, I'm... No, I'm <laughs> I meant more of, 
don't wouldn't your first reaction be he like, went on Maury Povich? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> wouldn't you? Wouldn't your? Okay, I know that sounds so silly and mean, but it's like, hey, I'm snipped. Like, I kind of want to know because to me, it's like in my mind, I'm totally wrong, probably. But no in, my, way. in my mind, snipping's more, you know, more effective than taking birth control. Yes, I would agree with that. But it's less effective if you want to one day reverse it. This is you can rub on it for a little while, stop using it. I don't care about it, this gel. And then it comes back this magically. It's an old conversation. It's the stupidest <laughs> okay. thing I've ever heard. Okay. Who's going to use that besides like some guy who sprays Axe body spray on him? He's like, oh, make sure you have a nice smell to it. It says in a clinical trial, 86% of the men achieved low sperm counts by week 15 of using the gel. And like I said earlier, 1 million spermies per milliliter are considered low enough to prevent pregnancy. Sure so that, that is the you goal. You sure that here. daughter isn't baby Jesus? Well, we have made the joke that she is going to be something special. Yeah. Because she was on birth control and he had been snipped, yet they still, the combination of that, that, that And two, he didn't even get it, the baby tested? I don't think he needed to at that point, but I would. that child, we've always joked, is going to be something special. She was meant to be here on no, I get that. planet Earth. I'm happy. It's not like I'm saying I'm not going to take care of the child. I just would do it just because I'm like, man, the, what are the odds? So uh, typical birth control pills, rings, and patches for women have failure rates of about 7%. And then, like it says, meaning seven out of every 100 women who use it will get pregnant, where condoms have a failure rate of about 13%. Seems a little high for me, man. Seems a little high. Yeah, I would totally get snipped. All right. All right, man, it is time for the quick hit here. We'll do do a show while it's happening. Live. Actually, I have have, um, heard a show where someone did that live on the air. No, never mind. We're not doing that. Quick hit Quick hit hit here at the end of of the show. 35 years ago, uh, an Air Canada flight... um, had a crash landing carrying all 143, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, Flight 143 had a crash carrying 69 passengers from Montreal to Edmonton. And you might be thinking, why are we talking about this? Planes, unfortunately, go down all the time. The reason for this one going down was a miscalculation in fuel, because at that time in 1983, Canada was switching over to the metric system, and somebody got the calculations (laughs) incorrect. And they did not give the plane enough fuel. I always thought you wait till it tops off. <laughs> right? Click, 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 click. Yeah, I don't know if they have that method on the uh, the airplane, but that uh, is really wild. That's hilarious. Man. Yeah, it's uh, good da, da, for da, 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 them. Da. I'm trying to see my sense here a little bit more. Uh, it says it was a miscalculation in fuel. Uh, oh yeah, so I guess it was imperial measurements to the metric system, so the plane had not uh, reached its maximum amount of fuel needed, but they did in the imperial measurements. Whoops. This is why we just need to stay off metric, man. Stay good old America. Stay on the, the regular measurements. A foot. A yard. What a is, gallon. What is, an ounce. what is ours called? I don't know. It says imperial. I'm assuming that's what ours is. Imperial? I don't know. It's whatever. It's based off some king's decision at one point. It's like, yep, that's a gallon. Well, Stop like, right there. Oh, I like the imperial system. Yeah. Well, it's just that, what we're that used to. That name sounds more dominating. Than metric? Yeah. yeah metric sounds like you're too smart, so we got to beat you up. Imperial sounds really haughty. Imperial sounds very basic. Like that's three goose feathers, and <laughs> yeah, it does sound a little ancient, doesn't it? Yeah, I like it. Awesome, man. Well, that is all we've got time for this week, onesies. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Like, make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we will see you next week. Sweating through long night, talk radio in the fight. Dick slumping in his chair, breathing heavy hearted. Fans broken and fair, he where we can bear. Heart and ways blues, no AC. Can't breathe, can't see. Tough time, Dick's barely breathing fine. Sweating, he were in a twine. Microphone slipping back, audience getting mad. Hot as a stove.
chocolate. This show.